There's nothing quite so frightening as someone who knows they are right. Shall we educate ourselves in what is known, and then, casting away all we have acquired, turn to ignorance for aid, to guide us among the unknown? But still try, for who knows what is possible? No matter what you look at, if you look at it closely enough, you are involved in the entire universe. I hope that in due time the chemists will justify their proceedings by some large generalizations deduced from the infinity of results which they have collected. For me, I am left hopelessly behind, and I will acknowledge to you that through my bad memory, organic chemistry is to me a sealed book. Some of those here, Hoffman, for instance, consider all this, however, as scaffolding, which will disappear when the structure is built. I hope the structure will be worthy of the labor. The force of the temptation which urges us to seek for such evidence and appearances as are in favor of our desires, and to disregard those which oppose them, is wonderfully great. In this respect, we are all more or less active promoters of error. I will simply express my strong belief that that point of self-education which consists in teaching the mind to resist its desires and inclinations until they are proved to be right, is the most important of all, not only in things of natural philosophy, but in every department of daily life. Nature is our kindest friend and best critic in experimental science, if we only allow her intimations to fall unbiased on our minds. A man who is certain he is right is almost sure to be wrong. We receive as friendly that which agrees with us. We resist with dislike that which opposes us, whereas the very reverse is required by every dictate of common sense. The five essential entrepreneurial skills for success are concentration, discrimination, organization, innovation, and communication. I was at first almost frightened when I saw such mathematical force made to bear upon the subject, and then wondered to see that the subject stood it so well. It is right that we should stand by and act on our principles, but not right to hold them in obstinate blindness or retain them when proved to be erroneous. Bacon, in his instruction, tells us that the scientific student ought not to be as the ant who gathers merely, nor as the spider who spins from her own bowels but rather as the bee who both gathers and produces. All this is true of the teaching afforded by any part of physical science. Electricity is often called wonderful, beautiful, but it is so only in common with the other forces of nature. The beauty of electricity or of any other force is not that the power is mysterious and unexpected, touching every sense at unawares in turn, but that it is under law, and that the taught intellect can even now govern it largely. I am busy just now, again, on electromagnetism, and think I have got hold of a good thing, but can't say. It may be a weed instead of a fish, 
that after all my labor, I may at last pull up. I am no poet, but if you think for yourselves as I proceed, the facts will form a poem in your minds. You will be astonished when I tell you what this curious play of carbon amounts to. A candle will burn some four, five, six, or seven hours. What, then, must be the daily amount of carbon going up into the air in the way of carbonic acid? Then what becomes of it? Wonderful is it to find that the change produced by respiration is the very life and support of plants and vegetables that grow upon the surface of the earth. I can at any moment convert my time into money, but I do not require more of the latter than is sufficient for necessary purposes. The important thing is to know how to take all things quietly. Do not refer to your toy books and say you have seen that before. Answer me, rather, if I ask you, have you understood it before? There is no more open door by which you can enter into the study of natural philosophy than by considering the physical phenomena of a candle. What a weak, credulous, incredulous, unbelieving, superstitious, bold, frightened, what a ridiculous world ours is, as far as concerns the mind of man. How full of inconsistencies, contradictions, and absurdities it is. I declare that taking the average of many minds that have recently come before me, I should prefer the obedience, affections, and instinct of a dog before it. Who would not have been laughed at if he had said in 1800 that metals could be extracted from their ores by electricity, or that portraits could be drawn by chemistry? If the term education may be understood in so large a sense as to include all that belongs to the improvement of the mind, either by the acquisition of the knowledge of others, or by increase of it, through its own exertions, we learn by them what is the kind of education science offers to man. It teaches us to be neglectful of nothing, not to despise the small beginnings, for they precede of necessity all great things in the knowledge of science, either pure or applied. Work, finish, Publish. Speculations? I have none. I am resting on certainties. The lecturer should give the audience full reason to believe that all his powers have been exerted for their pleasure and instruction. I have far more confidence in the one man who works mentally and bodily at a matter than in the six who merely talk about it. I cannot conceive curved lines of force without the conditions of a physical existence in that intermediate space. Water is to me, I confess, a phenomenon which continually awakens new feelings of wonder as often as I view it. The condition of matter I have dignified by the term electronic, the electronic state. What do you think of that? Am I not a bold man, ignorant as I am to coin words? Lectures which really teach will never be popular. Lectures which are popular will never really teach. 
I could trust a fact and always cross-question an assertion. The book of nature which we have to read is written by the finger of God. All are sure in their days except the most wise. He is the wisest philosopher who holds his theory with some doubt. Nothing is ever too good to be true.